<laughs> it's not live yet. <laughs> it says it's live. I know, I never know when it's exactly started recording. I think we can assume it has. Yeah, it's like four seconds in. I'm sort of gathering that, so it's gone live. We're live! Yay! Hello. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, delayed drinking coffee. Mm. We're trying to work out before we got on here what week number this is. How many weeks we've we been doing this? I've looked. I think it's about 18. I think it is week 18. Where's the time gone? Where's the mic gone? I forgot. But you told me not to look at you. <laughs> not bad. Not looking at me. It's about making sure your voice is going into I don't the, want to look at you. It's a microphone. Talking to the microphone. I don't want to look at you or talk to you. It's I'll just talk rude. To people that are just going to have an argument right at the beginning of the video. Nobody here. It's brilliant. Let's do it. People like it when we begin. <laughs> We don't know that nobody's watching. That's a good point. Somebody's watching. They might be watching. They might be watching on their TV. Could be, yeah. That's a good point. Because them young people know how to do all of that. That's the thing. I mean, we, we press live on here and we never know exactly how many people are there. So, should we get started? Should we get, should we get oh, as yeah. the YouTubers say, should we get into it? Do they? Yeah. Is that what they say? It's kind of, go, should we get into it? That's what they say, shall we? Right. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, first thing, bit of disclosure, I've had quite a strong coffee. <laughs> yeah. I've, also, I've also had quite a stressful week, so if we go off on some random tangents where I get on my little soapbox, apologies for that. <laughs> Why have you had a stressful week? Because you started work and left me in the house on my own with the kids. Ha <laughs> ha. Who were grown up, obviously. <laughs> Still, still left me in the Why house with the kids. Do we look too old to have yeah, we, young children? Yeah, we look about too old house. to have like six year olds running around. They're grandkids, they are. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, right. Are we going to get right? What we're going to talk about, but quickly before we do that, we need to do a little introduction. My name's Alistair. And that's Penny. Mm -hmm. we, at Wickham Warriors. We've been doing this for weeks and weeks and weeks now. I'm glad you're joining us. We can see a few people are there. What we're going to talk about tonight. I thought that tonight we could talk about firsts. First what, like virginity? times. Oh, what kind of first times? What, like... Why are you being inappropriate? <laughs> Stop it and behave or I'm not going to do this anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about firsts. Yeah. Not what I was getting at at all. No, um, nothing inappropriate. Please don't leave. No, I'm going to scroll that screen up though because it distracts me. I, oh, I, I like it. I end up talking to my own face and the camera's up there and it confuses me. Oh, okay. So yeah, we're going to talk tonight about first experiences. So our first time of something paranormal, the first time we've seen a ghost, um, first time I used a communication board, first time I picked up tarots. Is that, you can do that as well, can't oh, you? Hang on. I mean, these are all topics that... Um, I think uh, Marion's on the wrong one. She's just sent a message to say, sorry to be dumb, is this live? <laughs> I don't know how to confirm that. I don't know, what one are you watching? It'd be, yeah, I don't know, it'd be the one live at the top of the screen. Oh, I don't know what to suggest. I'm going to tell her nope. It's not that one, it's the one with the candles lit in the background. Okay, I'll do that. You, right, I'll... Just claim the, the viewers... <laughs> I'll entertain our fan while you do that. While you <laughs> while you let our other fan know There's what page to be on. There's more than that. <laughs> we've got quite a few top fans, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about the first time we used tarot, um, the first time there was some form of mediumship, uh, first time lucid dreaming, the first time we had contact with angels or spirit guides, and deity connections. Now, I'm not saying we're going to get all of these covered, because you know what we're like. We'll waffle a bit. So this could end up that we've got perhaps a bit of extra for another video. I don't know. Might be. It'd be really nice if some of you um, let us know what was your first time of yeah. uh, paranormal experiences. Especially if you'd got stuff as kids and then as you get older, you become that little bit more sceptical and I think a bit more less open to... the spirit world if that makes sense it's kind of that sort of logic you become a bit more desensitized to it as you become a teenager or was that just me because my focus changed i don't know 
Could be. No, it can't be that because <clears throat> I used my <laughs> I used my medium chip and psychometry while I was a teenager. Would you like to expand <laughs> on that? It sounds like you would. No, I used it as a way to chat up girls. We have swapped seats. We've gone back to the original seat, I think. Uh, I don't know. I can never remember which way around it is on the camera. To which I nearly flipped it because there was a button on the camera that said flip the image. And I thought I could do that and really freak people out. Oh, but yeah. right. We might be in the wrong places. I don't know anymore. Oh, I don't know. We just, as long as one of us is sat <laughs> either <laughs> side of a microphone, we'll go with that. Yeah. But yeah, let us know where your firsts, whether you <clears throat> sort of experienced more as a kid or was it the surrounding the house that you lived in as a kid? So, mm-hmm. so nothing sort of happened later in life. Do you think you're a bit of a conduit and you don't want to be? Let us know in the comments below. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's get into it. That's my catchphrase for this evening. Oh, Lord. When was your first paranormal moment, Penny? When did you think, oh, my God, that's a, a ghost or a right, spirit? This is really hard for me. Oh, of course it is. Because, don't be rude. <laughs> No, because I find it really difficult to pinpoint the very beginning. And even though I've got shocking memory now, short-term memory, I think. I can't remember. Um, <laughs> Terrible joke. My long-term memory of stuff is better. I, my first memories are from the age of three because of the house that we lived in and I right. remember distinct things about that house and I remember having an experience there and we moved just before my fourth birthday I can't remember that far back in my life you see I can and I can remember particular situations um, as well crumbs and my first feeling of there's somebody here with me admittedly giant family um to be alone in quite a small house was quite difficult but i do remember sensing something there because i think as a when babies are there you've got babies looking at we've all seen it the baby cams of kids standing up and looking towards nothing in the room that's be- seen that with um our second oldest grandchild hmm. there is a full video of him holding a full conversation and then putting his arms out to hmm. be lifted but at that age they have no concept of who is in the room physically and who is in the room spiritually yeah until they get told that until they see the physicality difference like or the so- fear that yeah or there's something else. else that kicks in that the brain then goes oh Oh, hang on a minute, that wasn't from this world. Mm -hmm. And that's that little bit of, like I said earlier, that bit of salt in the ointment, I think. That if we embraced all of that from the beginning, God, you could end up with a... I didn't have anybody to tell me that anything different. I don't think I particularly discussed it with anybody. See, I started... certainly not, Yeah, because I experienced stuff. I didn't want to talk to me. My mum had got... My maternal mum had rune stones and tarots and the kind of box sets that I think she'd bought through studio cards and stuff. <laughs> Do you know, and it was that sort of logic. And she'd just get them out of parties and family gatherings and stuff. So I was aware of the stuff and had had experiences with seeing things. And that's why I started reading the Arthur C. Clarke's books, because that was the Google then. Mm-hmm. So it was a case of, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. So rather than trying to ask people to figure it out i just wanted to read books to try and learn as much as i could about said topic to then figure out if what i was experiencing was right but, self-reliant yeah right. but to do that you've kind of got to i've got all the experiences that were there as like five and six which you kind of question to an extent then running up to sort of ages nine and ten but i don't remember anything past from a spiritual point of view probably about eight or nine because that's when I first seen my granddad. So that was about... I hear that a lot, though. Lots of people say that. that the, the first person they saw was a grandparent. That, had... that was the first one I'd, I'd, I'd seen. I'd, I felt 
my grandma's presence there and firmly believe she was my guide for a bit. But to actually see a physical manifestation of something, of some body, yeah, no, that was the first one because he took a drag of his fag and his face lit up red. And it was only my kind of <laughs> sense of mind that you kind of go, oh, crap, there's a man in the room. And, and then you start to go, hang on, well, how's my granddad in the room? Am I awake? Am I asleep? And there was just then too many questions going through to then to be freaked out by what had happened. Okay. But I've spoken about him before. Yeah. So in your jumbled up memories then, mm -hmm. who was the first spirit you seen? Right, this is the bit where it gets a bit complicated and it's only just now while you was talking I thought, this is quite weird because... I hear lots of people say, oh, it was a granddad or nan that I saw first. And I never likened the, my first experience to anybody that I knew. And it was only just this second I thought about it. And I thought, I, I was trying to think back to what did I get from them? And I got from them a name. And the name was Mary. Right. Okay, now I've got a sister called Mary. Um, on my paternal side, there are a lot of Marys. Scottish. Uh, yeah. Shocker. Um, but I, I didn't really think about the fact that I got the name. And it's the same as whenever I, I get other information. It, it just like pops into mm. my head. Okay. So I know that I got the name Mary. But it wasn't until just this second when you was talking, I thought that was my paternal grandmother's name, Mary. Yeah. And something that I didn't know until way later in life, in my 20s, was that she was a medium. And she used to read tea leaves and cards. Um, but I... I didn't know that until I was in my 20s because it was a secret. Uh, well, it wasn't a secret. It was implied that I must never discuss my interest in any of this um, with my dad. Mm. I might have talked about this before. Yeah, I know you we've have. talked about it. No, you have before. on here as well. Yeah. Right, okay. And it was only at the end when he said. Yeah, that you found it, out. That I found out mm. that actually. It was a huge thing for him. Huge. And we could have bonded over that. Definitely. But it was, uh, his mum's name was Mary. Yeah, so I'd spoken to my dad about it, especially this psychometry stuff, where I would do what I considered it to be a trick. I would read the energy within a, port, a picture. And at the time, generally, that's kind of what teenage girls had in their rooms they had a picture of somebody normally a family member of some sort yeah and i would just read the energy from that and it was just a conversation sort of an icebreaker and to display how nice and sensitive i am <laughs> and that it was what it did was to me as a work? trick yeah it did yeah <laughs> <laughs> um it was never i never took it really seriously even in moments where you sort of end up telling somebody something in a randomly in a pub. And my dad's confirmed he used to do that when he was a kid or a teenager. I don't know why, but I need to tell you this. And you just leave people with random pieces of information. I don't do that so much now because I don't have the confidence to <laughs> just walk up to random people now. But, but I did then. Okay. Or it was because I was drunk in a pub, one of the two. Possibly. So does any of this resonate with you guys? Do you think, yeah, you used to see things as kids? Put it in the comments. I've heard some really cool stories. Um, my friend, um, I think it was when she lived in a pub with her little girl, and her little girl was little at the time, um, and she kept going out to play and saying, I'm playing with whatever the name was, she said. I'm playing with this little girl. And then... Um, she saw her out playing with the little girl. Oh, right. Okay. And said, is, is this your friend? Um, my friend is a sensitive. And said, is this your friend? And yes, this is whatever the little girl's name was. And didn't find out until much later that 
that was the name of a little girl who died, I think, either that had lived at the pub at some mm. point or definitely within the area. And they couldn't find this little girl then. Once they found this information out, they couldn't find the little girl anywhere. So she never came back to play. Ooh. That so was that a manifestation or a residual energy? It would have been a manifestation. Yeah, because you couldn't interact with residual energy. Ooh, mm. that's interesting. That's cool. Okay, when was the first time you used a communication board? Otherwise known as a tarot board. Not a tarot board. A Ouija board. board. Spirit board, Spirit Ouija board, board, communications board. One of them. A Hasbro board. <laughs> <laughs> a toy with letters and, yeah. and things on it. Um, I was probably quite a bit older. I think oh. I just never came into contact with one. Again, I was a bit of a weirdo. I know that I was a bit of a weirdo. You um, was. And didn't... <laughs> and didn't... Um, really spend time with people who were as interested in it as I was. So I think it was quite late in my life. It was probably well into my 20s before I actually Blimey. used one. Oh no, I was a teenager. I did the classic teenage thing. What, did you make one with the, letters? Yeah, we made one because my mate Nick at the time lived in um, the house in Drummond. I was going to name it then. I thought oh, perhaps best not. <laughs> Um, the, the particular house. It's the one I said that I, the other week when I said I had to walk past the graveyard. That oh, house yeah, yeah. apparently had a curse on it to do with the daughters. There was some curse. I can't remember the ins and outs of it. Um, so we'd got it in our heads that there must be a curse or spirit there. So we're, what, 14, 13, 14? So we've made the board. Apparently I'm the authority on it because I've read some Arthur C. Clarke's books and I've watched some scary films. Obviously. So I'm kind of designing it up. We've got it and all the glass and everything. And it was going perfectly. We'd kind of taken it really seriously until the moment I said, is there anybody out there? At which point, <laughs> three teenage lads just pissed themselves and go, if anything fucking happens now, I'm going to piss my punts. It was just, we couldn't keep a straight face doing it. So there was no way that the energy was going to work. But then we all spoke afterwards and going, what if we accidentally opened the gateway and we don't know now? It's a portal. <laughs> and there was that was that element at that time where it was just a toy. It was just mucking about. It gave us something to do for the afternoon up in yeah, the loft. I really, <laughs> they weren't really in my realm of knowledge then. I think year. it depends on your ability. I think... Using a Ouija However, board is like having a touch-tone phone. I can if you don't need the touch-tone phone because you can hear them, no. <laughs> you're all right. I was going to say, however, my first seance... Right. I was probably 12, and I conducted it. And did so regularly... Right. ...with random friends. Yeah, we did one called... The, I think it was called the 39 Steppies. We did that at youth club once. And the girl got so freaked out, an actual ambulance turned up. You broke somebody. We we genuinely broke somebody. Dremur really? Memorial Hall. In the you go in the hall, the back room in the kitchen. We were mucking about in there, just doing this, counting down somebody but down this the is steppies. The thing. Were you doing it for fun? Yeah, we were just mucking about. We'd heard about it somewhere. I don't know where. Not on the internet because it went around. Not from belief or any connection that you'd had. So. No, no. It was just one of these. You were just kids messing. Yeah. See, for me at that at, at that point, it was it was serious. Oh no, at sixteen, I was mucking about with it. If one of my mates' heads had spontaneously combusted, I'd have been a believer straight away there and then. Good God, I don't know what would have happened. Juicing scanners. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I read quite a lot of paranormal books. Okay. So that oh, I was a prolific reader of, of uh, and, paranormal. Yeah, but the other stuff is like the Thirty Nine Steppies. That's not paranormal. That's folklore, and mm -hmm. the idea. I don't know. For those that don't know this, what this was, the Thirty Nine Steppies was a, about you talking somebody into hypnosis, a, a trance, hypnotic state. Yeah, and it's it involves walking down steps and then out of a door and towards a tree and a seat. But you kind of, you can create the journey however you like. You just need a willing participant. And this willing a participant, um, she went a bit delay pip, and genuinely all of us went holy crap, and all felt that was. And we all had the, <laughs> the classic talking to afterwards that that was dangerous. 
but that incident is what was part of what spurred me on to learn neurolinguistics because the power of words compels you (laughs) (laughs) it is we're all powerless to an extent against it because it's subliminal subconscious sorry tangent so yeah so seance so when did you do your first seance then did it work what did i say i was about 12 Hmm. mine was just fucking about yeah about 12 yeah but it was more about rather than bringing somebody forward about each person in the circle making a connection with one person a separate person not saying is anybody there (laughs) come into the room and affect one of us or touch one of us or make a connection so we can all hear it wasn't about that it was about making a connection between one person and one spirit Mm. Um, and yes and it was interesting because you said about going to a tree and to a seat under the tree I made that up it's my journey I don't remember all the details of it but I definitely remember it was about um, going down a really long corridor I have no idea how the script for it came into my head particularly at that age Um, and I know that it was about um, walking down a really long corridor and at some point and there are loads of doors all the length of this corridor and it's so long you can't see the end of it and that at some point you will reach a door that feels like your door the person that you need to connect with is the other side of that door that's pretty cool so when you get to that door wait maybe we should do a live wait trance. until everybody else has found their door so when everybody had found a door and for some people it was quite quick and for some people mm. it was uh quite slow and i'll be honest with you everybody seemed genuinely engaged with it it didn't seem like to me it certainly didn't feel like it was a anybody's messing about it seemed like a a genuine interest mm. Um, and then going into that room and in the centre of this empty room, great big empty room, is a chair. Right. A rocking chair. Who? And somebody is sitting on that chair. And you need to talk to that person because they have information that they want to give you. So each person, we all sat quietly, nobody was talking out loud. And it, it was probably a good half an hour at that point that everybody was just eyes closed silent a couple of whimpers a couple of people looking quite uncomfortable um, but ev- almost i think everybody had an engagement of type yeah that wasn't the same for my one but yeah i was about 12 and used to do that regularly but i'd never seen anybody do it before wasn't instructed. Oh no, I read. I read some books. <laughs> I'd read stuff, but I'd never, I'd never witnessed it or anything. I, it just felt like the right thing to do, and I think it was. I think it was the proper start to my journey. It, it was it actually started off as it was a, a place I designed as. You know, people talk about mind palaces. I know that became more popular as a saying since Sherlock. But yeah. the bits in your head where you kind of put things logically. Mm-hmm. And that process was part of the escapism for me as a kid. So going down the steps and getting to the bottom of a turret door. It's a tower that you walk down. I don't right. know how you get to the top door. I don't know. Mm-hmm. The top door is where you enter the tower. You walk down the spiral staircase. And at different periods within the bit, sometimes I'll run down them, sometimes I'll walk down them, sometimes I'll uh, walk really slow. And I purposely muck about with the speed of getting to the bottom door. Right. So it gets me into where I'm going. It's about, it's, with me, it's about stupid details, noticing the feel of the brick. Well, you coming find down that with stage. meditation anyway. Yeah, and then you get to the bottom of the door and you open that and it's just a wall that leads up to a tree. It's a little bit like Shawshank. The very end, yeah. that tree and that yeah, wall. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, wow, yeah, that's yeah. about the best visual I could give you. That looks pretty well, much well, what it's when, like. Uh, red goes to find the box. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's similar to that, except there's a bench on it. And the idea is that that's where I would go in my head to to sit and think. 
because where I was physically, I couldn't relax and chill out. So that's where I would go. Is it metaphysically? What's it last time? Yes. Bah, bah, bah. So yeah, and that was just I adapted Are you it. Up anything now? It, it does feel weird in here. Yeah. Um, right. So what was the first time you had? psychometry when was the first time you held something i mean oh, oh it's talking to me okay i can feel something why does this ring feel upset i can't pinpoint the first time that happened um what i can tell you is i met with um when i was 16 i met somebody i was staying at somebody's house at that point and a random relative of theirs came to visit and um, for the second time in my life kind of went mm, I'm getting something about you you've got a connection um, so we did a little experiment and um, he said I want you to uh, do it was more about imagery actually rather than psychometry because psychometry came afterwards right. um, and it was uh, a connection with his mum which Brilliant. I picked up super quick and he said it's a particular object and I said I oh, know it's a music box it's a music box and it, it's like lilac violet in colour and it's got little flowers on it and it's really really cute and it's a box and he was quite freaked out by that and said you're absolutely right and he uh, he was a psychic but I think I unnerved him with the connection and he said I've been guided to give you a gift Ooh. and um, he gave me and I've still got it uh, I've got the the uh, charm still but I haven't got the necklace and he gave me a, a necklace and it had a little tiny charm on it and admittedly it is um, Madonna and child oh, wow. a gold Madonna and child but it had a, a little um, inlay on it that was coloured that kind of went over the top of it mm. and he said I've been guided to give this to you for your baby and I was pregnant who? And, it wasn't it um, no he weren't that good <laughs> um, and I've still got that upstairs I've got okay. it in my jewellery box upstairs still I never gave it to my baby <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I felt it. such a link to it, and apparently it was it was his mother's, which was a bit strange that he felt compelled to give it to me. And I did get the connection, the the uh, the mother feeling, hmm. maternal feeling from it. This is where I struggle to find the first time. It's hard, isn't it? Because it is for the psychometry because as a kid, my maternal mum would all, well, they liked going to car boot sales when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I would pick stuff up and I'd be drawn to, and I always liked old photographs. And I would, and I swear I was always drawn to, I was always flicking through old photographs of my grandmas. Yeah. So that kind of, I always had that sense that I got more out of a photograph than what's physically in the photograph. Probably you got the visual representation of that person and that was your connection. That was the, it quickly gave you that connection. Yeah, to an Because lots of people touch photographs and the problem is you'll have residual energies from anybody who's ever touched that photograph. No, see, I don't think that. Okay. Because the photograph locks it the same way as the image is locked into the paper, the energy is locked in at that moment. Okay. So it's a moment frozen as residual time that sits in there. If you can read it, you can read it. You won't take energy out of it and you won't edit energy in it because it's a photograph. An item of jewellery that... I'll agree to disagree. No, no, I know. I know, we'll, I know I didn't think you'd agree with me on that. But an item of jewellery, because you wear it constantly, oh, well, you'll bombard it with your own it's energy. A daily absorption of exactly, energy. Exactly. But holding a photograph, it's a frozen snapshot of time. You cannot edit is that, that like a photograph. photograph. Well, yes, but what I'm saying is, in a digital photograph, you don't get that now because you can manipulate the photograph. Okay. But what are you taking the mick out of? The way I said it. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, everybody's got to speak like Penny. It's Queen in, Queen's English, apparently. Good. Photograph. God. What did I say? Photograph. So what's the difference? 
mine's correct and yours isn't. Let us know. How do you say <laughs> photograph? Do you say photograph stop or photograph? Stop it in the comments. Because it's not a photo of a graph. That's a totally separate thing. Well, that's what thing. you just said. You said photograph. I said photograph. So is that what confused you? You thought I was talking about photos of graphs. Yeah. Like a collection of pie chart no, photos. Because <laughs> <laughs> it would be pie Should charts. I'm, I'm, People don't need to see us. I told a you it would be a random tangent. I couldn't help People it. People don't need to see us bigger. So yeah, I don't believe that in a photograph, because it's a locked piece of information as a snapshot, yeah. I'm not, like I said, I'm not talking about digital photos, I'm talking about hard photographs. Okay. You kind of, in my head, it's a little bit like the Harry Potter logic, that it's those, like a live photo on an iPhone, it's that kind or of logic. Or any phone. Other phones are available, but the best one's an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Send me an iPhone, Apple, I need phones. <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. Um, yeah, so that's what I believe. But with okay. jewellery and other items that perhaps sit in your house, you're bombarding them with new, fresh energy all the time. So you will, you okay. will change the energy in there. Okay. I don't know if we've got comments and we just can't see them. Uh, I don't think so. The only comment we've got <clears throat> is that one there. Oh, right, okay. Because it, it just says two up there. I didn't know there was another one. No. No, okay. No, no, no. Right, so next one then. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. We're kind of just... <laughs> having a bit, of having a ramble and a chat. yeah, but it's it's how it started. Right, next one: lucid dreams. Okay. When was the first time you remember having a lucid dream, and how did you try and explain it or deal with it? Uh, I was probably about eight or nine. Hmm. Okay. Details. You're normally full of details. What's going on? Okay, it's uh uh reoccurring dream that I've had a, quite a lot in my life and I don't, I, I've i tried but I've not been able to, to um, what's the word? Manipulate it? No, change it? No, need it, it to, uh, to find out why it happens at particular points in my life. Oh. This dream. So it was a dream and it was about me um, being in the war in war times, but working as a uh, housemaid and having to make up rooms in this guest house, B and B, something like that. You know how people used to put their houses up for borders and stuff. Not a brothel or anything like that. No. Okay, just check in. Um, and I remember a soldier coming to the to the house. Right. And I hadn't finished doing the room and getting in trouble, and the room had to be a particular way, and there was barely anything in it. And, but I had that when I was about eight or nine, that dream, and I thought, that's a weird dream. It's not the kind of dream that is normal for an eight-year-old. So what made you know it was lucid? So the next day, I thought I thought about the dream and thought it would be quite cool if I could go back in and, and find out what that was about. And I did. Gosh, like good night, sweetheart. It is a little bit. <laughs> it is a little bit, and it went on for about about a week, to be honest. And it was like the continuation. It it was like episodes, right? Of something, and then <laughs> a really boring the, bed and breakfast. The, yeah, it was, <laughs> Dur it was like during oh, I'm the war, more, more tidying up. <laughs> And here's the weird thing, because I've always dreamed all my life, um, except for one week, which I remember because I always dream, and I always dream in colour. That dream, those dreams, aren't in colour. They're in black and white. Ooh. Which is weird. So it's See, like I, I slip into a, a war film. But I can do that with other dreams. If I'm that dream is a, a one that comes up random at random points in my life, and I can't, um, I can't think of the word. I don't know why the, it comes up. I can't. Um, it will come to me at some point. That stupid word. Okay. But I can do it with other dreams as well. If I'm really enjoying a dream, and then I wake up. And I remember the dream and I remember the details of it. It's like, oh yeah, I'm going back to that. So I very rarely remember mine. Unless I wake up in the dream and feel like I'm stuck in the dream, which I've spoken about on here before. 
Um, generally, I don't remember a damn thing about dreams. But the, the first time I remember having a dream that was different was the day I jumped off the bottom of my bed, flew through the hallway, through the lounge, down the corridor to my maternal mum's bedroom, and then told her I'd just flown all that way. And then she had to walk me back. As far as I'm concerned, I flew, and still think it now, I flew from the bed to the bedroom. There is no point between the bottom of that bed and there where my feet were on the floor. I don't remember a thing about that. But then I remember her walking me back going, yeah, that's very good, exciting, that. Just basically giving me a load of shit to, to get me back into bed. Oh, that sounds really interesting. <laughs> I said, yeah, and he got back into bed. And that was it. And that, I kind of could never figure out whether I just walked there and slept walked there. Obviously, I couldn't have, surely I couldn't have physically flown. But as far as I was concerned, that's how I got from point A to point B. And to this day, I... I have no other way of explaining it. But I don't think well, that's lucid. There's a... To go along with that, there is um, something else that's really about lucid dreaming, which is knowing that you're dreaming and changing the dream. I, can, I do that as well. And I've got a, a few... Like random scary uh, scary oh. film scary dreams that i've had that i knew it was a dream i absolutely knew and i remember saying to the people in my dream this isn't real and i'm changing it and then manipulating it to change so if i was going i'm thinking of a particular one if i was going into a particular room and i i you get that feeling of this is going to be hmm. bad you know, if it was a movie, it would have had scary music as you're walking towards it kind of thing. It's that kind An of erratic feeling. erratic violin player. Yeah. And um, and you're waiting for somebody to jump out on you. <laughs> so going into that room in my dream and going, no, this isn't happening. I don't like it. Um, and then turning around and walking away from it. And then keep being compelled to go back to it and having to pull myself away from it constantly mm. so being able to change your dream while you're in it yeah no i can't do that <clears throat> it's when i get stuck in a dream that i think i've woken up in which i've like i said before they're the ones where i remember them because it freaks me out but normally i wake up and go ah oh, i know i was dreaming but bugger if i can remember what it was mm. they're obviously just boring but with you saying about the um being waking up in a different room mm. um i've slept walk to random to do random things in my life um in my mum's house there is a she's got a three-story house and it's really tall and floor to ceiling is a window on the landing that freaks me out i don't like heights anybody that knows me knows that they terrify me um but i used to wake up with my face on the window jesus <laughs> with my pillow in my hand next to me but wake up with my face there so i was looking down when i woke up that used to freak me out but it's worth knowing because i've heard this on other talks and things uh, people have asked why you sleepwalk i've have sleepwalked and, and as a kid about um sleep paralysis okay so sleep paralysis is while you're asleep your brain turns off motor function so that it can concentrate on the things that you need to happen to keep you alive, but to stop you hurting yourself from getting up and hurting yourself and doing stupid things. And some people's switches don't always work, so they sleepwalk. I used to sleepwalk as a kid, or I'd be under my bed, I'd sleep rummage around the room. I've told my mum before I was looking for a golden ball, I was fixing my bike, I was putting a chain on something... She's come in, come in loads of times, and this is like between sort of six and nine, and I'd be up to something random in there. And do you know what it was put down to? <clears throat> the turmoil of moving and being away from my dad. Mm. That's what they put it down to. Yeah, it was sure. Yeah, so it was, well, he keeps eating, he's not putting any weight on, it's all turmoil and stress. I won't. I was just a kid. I'll tell you two, li <laughs> tell you two little creepy things, all right? Um, my boy used to sleepwalk a lot 
when he was little. He doesn't sleepwalk now. He sleep shouts. Um, but and the the weirdest thing is he sleeps with his eyes open. So you'd go to check on him and he'd be lying there with his eyes open, just staring at you. Crumbed. That was a bit weird. Um, but he would sleepwalk and of course his eyes were wide open and he'd wander down the stairs and you'd have a full conversation and then you'd realise that he looked zoned out and you'd realise he was asleep and have to change the conversation and get him back to his bed. <laughs> the right? usher in. So that was quite weird. Um, and my youngest daughter, um, that thing that you do as a parent, I'll just check the kids before I go to bed, I'll just check the kids and... Um, they were in bunk beds, my girls were in bunk beds, and the youngest one uh, sat up. As I walked in the room, she sat bolt upright, you know, proper horror film sit up, and just, there was complete silence, and I was, are you all right? And this is no word of a lie, she went, la, la, la. <laughs> and her head turned all the way around. And I thought, before she even looks at me, I'm like, you're fine. And left and shut the door. So I've got to sleep. Tell now. that you're... demon to be out by morning. <laughs> You've got school. <laughs> you little weirdo. Jeebus. Yeah, so that's weird. All right, we've got a couple of comments. Do you want to... Uh, okay. Because you're on the computer side. You're in control of those. So, from Anna. Earlier on, I had a ringing noise in my right ear. And out of my left ear, I could hear voices or music. Out of my left. Oh, has Anna got headphones in? She pops watching us with headphones in. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I it tried would be to because focus and listen, but I couldn't hear anything clearly. It's my first time having a sort of clear experience with this. Okay, so before we move on to the next one, there is a reason why I asked you earlier if you were sensing anything. Right. Because somebody was standing behind me. Oh, I didn't say that. And the reason why I know somebody was standing behind me, they haven't talked to me. I'm getting a vague energy there, but they're not coming through clearly. Um, it was a hand there. I felt that... Right, Those okay. two pressures quite firmly between my shoulder blades. And that's why, if you look back on the video, i probably go like that. Who? because I felt it quite clearly. So I'm wondering if that was around the same time that Anna picked something up. But because you were no, talking... No, it was before she cooked dinner and rang Leah. Oh, right. <laughs> Lord, like I know these details. Um, okay, so if anybody sees or hears anything um, during this, tell us, that'd be great. Or if anybody noticed anything um, spirit yeah. in this moment in time a spirit would have to be quite forceful with me because my the way my brain works yeah, they would have to yeah they would have to distract me at this point okay so um, um, so if you are in the room that's an open invitation to make your presence known if I you want to i can barely focus on one thing i oh, know right okay so let's let's move on to the wait, next wait. one so Ooh. just because we were talking about sleeping all right okay um and there's also got i used to sleep walk and talk and shout so much as a child, got dressed, brushed my teeth for school. That's excellent. Bet your mum was well pleased. My mum was to refer to them as night terrors. No, the night terrors are very but, different. Because it was... A, no, it, was, it all fitted the same thing, apparently, according to her. It might right. get up and walk and talk and move about and kind of... I think nowadays, if I was a kid now, I'd have just had ADHD or ADD, whatever diagnosis would have oh, fit. So I think absolutely ADHD. Yeah, but because I my brain never stopped. Yeah, night terrors. Do you want a is, tip is as an adult? More about if you find that you can't sleep, have a coffee. It sounds insane. Have a double espresso, the strongest coffee you can get, ten minutes before you want to go to sleep, and then go to sleep. I have the best night's sleep if I have a coffee. Yeah, but that's you. Mm, because but... it levels my brain off. Okay, so for the normal <laughs> people out there that don't have undiagnosed ADHD. Maybe we don't do that. <laughs> it was actually a Canadian study that I read. It was really it's interesting. Like, uh, what's the medication for that? Ritalin. <laughs> if you haven't got hyperactivity right. and you take Ritalin, it gives you hyperactivity. Oh, no, I don't want that. No, so if you took it, it would calm you the hell down. I don't if want I that. That's why I just said I don't want that. If I took it, I'd <laughs> get loads done. 
I'm not the wily it coyote. Is. It is true. Okay, move on now. Right, next one. So, angel. I put angel and guide. I have neither. Okay. Looking at me. Yeah, this, yeah, I do. Well, I think I do. I feel I do. I've had no connection to either. I, I've said that before. I don't believe that I have a guide. I believe I have an angel. Her name is Helen. And to take the piss one day, she showed herself to me as like the Archangel Gabriel with big fucking wing, white wings. And the conversation basically went, you cannot latch it off. And she went, no, it's the only way you will take my presence seriously. And she was kind of right, because I needed that kind of logic of, if you're an angel to help me, that's the depiction of an angel. Okay. It doesn't have to be tied into Jeebus and all of his crew. <laughs> it's just that depiction of an angel. So, and, I, and I remember thinking at the time, Helen wasn't particularly an angelic name. It's not, and it certainly doesn't come under no the... No offence uh, to my sister. <laughs> it doesn't come under the angels either. No, I know, and that's what I don't get. But as far as guides are concerned, I, like I said earlier, I believe that my grandma was my first guide. My granddad was kind of the setup. He kept coming to me and would influence things and help me with stuff. Mm -hmm. And then my grandma, when she passed, I think she helped me more. I knew you wouldn't be able to resist. <laughs> I wrote guide, but I didn't put the E on the end because I know what it meant. It was driving It's my me shorthand. Crazy. Can you, can you read the next one? Deity connection. And now, <laughs> do you know the only reason why I know that? I've got no idea what you've written there because that looks like diabig. <laughs> I know what it means. But you said it earlier. Yeah. But we've missed out. We've missed out. Uh, this no medium shit we've done when did we do that when you said about a seance okay I just, we didn't I, talk I, about tarot there was something that, that came to me this afternoon actually and that is an Amazon delivery here it, well that's true that <laughs> did happen um, the um, the link with uh, communication with uh, voices so in my case the voices sound in my head um, and I've only had one experience where I've had lots of little experiences where I've heard voices somewhere else but I've only had one connection where I heard it spoken specifically to me right. other than when they sound in my head um, and I, I might, I've told you this before, I don't know if I've said it on this particular uh, f platform, um, and that was, I was asleep, it was three o'clock in the morning, and a voice whispered in my ear, I was the only person downstairs at three o'clock in the morning, I fell asleep watching TV. Apparently not. And I felt the breath on my face, and they said, follow me. Quite clearly, and I kind of went, "What? What? What?" <laughs> <laughs> and it happened again, and I felt it on my cheek, and I jumped up because I was in that half asleep thing. So there is that, and there was. Uh, sorry, I've just had ideas come into my head, but I'm trying to think of the words at the same time. So, if you have connection with spirit... You have word, You have ideas that come into your heads that are not based on words. We are so on the same level. <laughs> I have lots of thoughts that come into my head. I have no words to explain. It's just a visual thing. And it actually is a visual thing, because what popped into my head was the image of a bus. All right. And the image of a bus was... Uh, uh, it was about being clairvoyant, which happened to me when I was about uh, 21, 22. And I... I had a vision, and I'd had visions from childhood, right. random ones, but that one stuck with me, and the, the bus is what made me think it. I had a vision of a bus crash, and it was really bad, and I was quite freaked out by it. And Final thought, destination. And thought, that's quite strange, that. Mm. And it, it's like when you have a really dodgy dream, and then for the rest of the day, it stays with you. The emotion of it stays with you and kind of bleeds over onto any everything. And I remember it was in the newspaper and it was on the TV news at the time that there had been this horrendous bus crash Jesus. where lots of people have died. And I thought, 
yeah, I'm not sure I want that. I'm not sure that I want to be able to see those things. Um, and I haven't, I have occasionally, but really minor things since. But I think I kind of did a mental binding on myself so that I couldn't see that anymore. The only prophecy I've foreseen is the demise of the human race with the eradication of the internet. This is an obsession for you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Weird. I hope the internet dies before I do. I really do. Obviously, then you'll have to pop round for coffee because you won't be able yeah, to watch this. Yeah, it'd be brilliant. Um, Sorry. What was the other one? Tarot. Yeah. When did you first read a tarot card and learn about tarot? Um, I must have been about 1920. Yeah, I was older when I got tarot. As in... 19 years or 20 years old, not in 1920. Ooh. None of us thought 1920. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I ended up buying some. Because like I said, my mum had the, the kind of packet sets that you'd buy from the book club. Yeah. But I wanted my own set. And that's when I worked for the Crafty Cauldron yeah. in Hinkley, I'd kind of looked at all the new stock of all the cards. And I wanted the Alistair Crowley ones, which she hadn't ordered in. So she had to order them in. Of course she did. Me. Just to be difficult. Yeah. Just to be difficult. No, I used to walk around the shop all the time going, why can't you get some more bloke stuff in here? Where's all the men's spiritual I've, stuff? I've got my original cards. They were upstairs. Yeah. I, I, I don't use them at all now. I, I like your Egyptian. Them. You've got an Egyptian set as well that I quite like. Uh, oh, they're not there. They're over no. there. Oh. Well, we've got loads but yeah it wasn't until and they say you're not supposed to buy your own cards you're supposed to be gifted think them that's nonsense and I just thought well I've been Who waiting a long time that? waiting if you think back to when the likelihood of that first starting was that people started reading from cards because it was it would originally have been um, runes yep you'd just make your own or I can't remember what it's called now is it clearomancy with the um Bones. Gizzards and... <laughs> nice. Necromancy. Bones. No. Stop it. So, um, yeah, I think that, that is a superstition. that would, You were saying there's no modern superstitions. I think that was a superstition that was tagged on. It's the same with worry dolls. You're not supposed to buy your own worry dolls. You're supposed to be gifted them. Yeah, so the, who? the it only say that in in the little pack that comes with it from Guatemala. The logic I came to through the research that I did into tarot gifting is only in the fact that you would have kind of taken on an apprenticeship kind of logic. So somebody would learn. Okay. So if somebody came to me and said, oh, "I want to learn how to read tarot," yeah, and be a medium, to, I would then teach you and then gift you the cards. All oh, right, okay. That's the only closest thing I could get to it that. The Romanies would do the same thing in that you would inherit your mums, your grandmas, okay. or they would make... And it kind of makes sense. Things would pass around, so less mon no money would be changing hands, because it wasn't about money. Right, okay. It was a passing on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's about as close as I could think, mm, maybe that's that makes kind of it. sense. Which means, as the first person in the, in the line, you kind of go, well, I've got to buy the cards then, so I can pass them on. Hmm. The Egyptian cards weren't mine, they were my dad's. I know, I like them, I like them yeah. cards. But I've never had anything as far as prophecies or... I had a prophecy, right. I had a vision when I was... I can remember where I was and it was a school trip. And it was really random school trip. And I don't know why we did... There must have been a fire safety thing or something. And we was all sent to our dorms. And there was about... Um, four or five of us in this one room and I had a vision and I got really upset by it True. and that's what I said I've only had it happen a few times um, and each time it's like oh, I really don't want that to happen and I got really upset and I was absolutely sobbing Strokes. and uh, the other girls in the room said um, what's the matter obviously because she was fine a few minutes ago and and I didn't want to tell them and then I did tell them, and it freaked them all out. <laughs> and then from that day, um, I was psycho. That's the what nearest... I was called, because they thought I was bonkers. I stopped sharing after that. It was quite a creepy vision I had. 
but I'm not going to share it. No, okay. The nearest I could get to that as far as some sort of seeing interview is when I get an inkling if I'm driving home or walking a particular way, I get an urge to go a different way, even if it's particularly the longer way around. If the notion crosses my mind to go a different way, I then believe I've thought of that for a reason or that thought's been pushed for a reason. So I'll then divert my route. A little, well, that's why I say it's either my intuition or somebody's pushed that piece of information. So just turn left here and go the other way around. Okay. Because two reasons. One, I get bored with driving the same journey. Mm-hmm. And two, familiarity breeds contempt. So if you constantly always drive the same way oh, home, yeah, I don't. you get into autopilot. So I've always, from a driving logic... Then you have driving hypnosis. Yeah, where you forget complete journeys. Yeah. And that's that was the other part of it, because I used to drive quite a lot. Was I'd drive a different way just to keep my brain active and what I was doing. But that was just, just me. So I never knew really if it was some form of precognitive idea or somebody else pushed it or i just thought fuck it i'll go a different way (laughs) okay this is a random one that's not on the list of potential firsts when knowing that we both love graveyards and cemeteries and you'll know which what the difference is between the two because you'll have watched a previous video um knowing that we have if you don't know watch it yeah, <laughs> we're not going to tell you which week it was. You've got to watch them all um, and share them all with your friends. But knowing that, and like and subscribe. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Um, knowing that we both have that love, forgetting family funerals. Do you remember the first time you went to a graveyard and thought, "I feel at peace. I feel I feel like this is somewhere that I can." Be. Uh, not until I was an adult. Graveyards to me were a bit, just a bit weird. I always felt because I was, I think I've said this in a previous way, because I always felt I was sensitive to stuff that they'd know and get me. <laughs> and I'd got no sense of what I could do to that's, stop it. That's how Becky's logic. And it, it was that, and again, that was during the time when I would read as much stuff I could get on paranormal to understand it to be forearmed and forewarned so no graveyards it's only in my later teens where i would go and sit and hide in graveyards and found that that piece that you're describing yeah um but this is why i said to you today when we went to the graveyard i said would it be weird to lay on top of a grave that's relatively done it's it's what nearly 100 years old there is nothing physically there now. It's all gone. There is it. There is a stone. Yeah. So if I lay there to chill out and relax, nothing disrespectful, not videoing it, not filming it, not vlogging it, I just lay there and relax. Does that count as disrespectful? I think it counts as disrespectful for anybody else who is going to that cemetery to visit a relative. Because of I, their visual interpretation of what they're going to see. Yeah. Okay, I'm not saying I'd do that. Because it's like reenacting a scary film. I think people would see that as a disrespectful thing. See, this is where I th- also think our, our pagan burial routines are a lot better than Christian ones. Mm-hmm. Buried in a hole, 100 years, nobody can use that bit of land now. What the hell? Yeah. Whereas you look at the Vikings, they built a mound of stuff. They built the the pyramids. They built these things for people to see that visual kind of logic. Okay. Yeah, I was just interested. I was about 14, 15, first time. Um, and it was... A, a, no, I don't know, like 17, 18, I think. Yeah, it was a cemetery that was just up the road from my school. And there was a little boy who had been run over and killed literally outside our house. Um, and I felt compelled to go and find his grave. And I went on my own in lunch hour. I didn't tell anybody where I was going. And I went to the cemetery to find his his grave and pay my respects. And he was four. Oh, and it, it broke me Strange. at that point. I'm quite emotional now just 
talking about it to be honest it was it kind of broke the community because it was in the summer and and oh it was vile um and seeing the person that was driving the car fall to bits in the street devastated and the ambulance and it was because of that i felt drawn to go to the cemetery to find his his grave to i don't probably selfishly to to give myself closure to the trauma of of the incident because i didn't see it happen but i'd seen the boy minutes before the other side of the road and i was in the house and i was in my bedroom and the window was open and i heard the impact and i remember looking out the window and going no and running downstairs and everybody came out of their houses it was Jesus. horrendous but then I realised that there were other people within that cemetery because as a child I, I went to no funerals and I don't believe children should be at funerals at all. When, when they should see the adults in their life as strong and their protectors, they shouldn't see grown-ups fall apart. I don't, I don't believe in that. You have a different take on that and that's absolutely fine, but for me. So I'd, ne I'd never been... I believe that. As I remember, I'd never been to a cemetery previously, and I certainly had never been to a funeral. Um, but I, I realised that there were other people that had been in my life in that cemetery. So I used to go at lunchtime on my own, out of school, trot along to the cemetery, go and say hello to everybody, because it was. It was a, hello, and this is what's going on at the minute, and hope you're all well, OK, I'm going go off and say hello to somebody else. And then go back to school afterwards at lunchtime. And you start, I did that for ages on my own. Um, Is there any... The kids called you what, sorry? Psycho. <laughs> it's... I don't care. I, I wasn't doing anything disrespectful. It was a, no, a you're... really peaceful, respectful connection. It's actually quite similar. I didn't want to be that personal about it. But Trifony Church, which is where, in Dremure, where I lived, while I was at school... Um, a lad that was a bit younger than me died, he from the village died of leukemia, mm -hmm. was buried in Petrifany Church. Not long after that, his brother killed himself because of the loss of his brother, and he was a mate of our mine and part of the crew. And that's the reason I went into the graveyard. Because a graveyard for me was all about old people. All the spirits in a graveyard were old every single one i had no connection to a person in a graveyard in theory yeah until the two brothers and it was going in to look at their graves that kind of you kind of go wow I, you guys i hope you're at peace now sort of logic mm. and then feeling that kind of change in it but yeah I, <laughs> it's weird that it's the same a similarity for the sort of because yeah the, the graveyard should just be old people born in 100 years ago and they're all covered in moss and when you see a gravestone that's brand spanking new it looks out of place it's very powerful and magic you know um gravestone moss i've used graveyard dirt um it wasn't actually it was cemetery dirt <gasps> do you know the difference <laughs> 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 we'll make you watch us all right, we've rambled. We've gone for over an hour. So, I don't know, I hope you, I, like I said, I say this every week. Yeah. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, we've if covered... you've stayed, you must have, or you're just watching us in disbelief that two people could talk such utter nonsense for an hour. Yeah, I'd be interested to know what happened with the automatic caption stuff that I clicked on on Facebook, because it's got two different voices going. I wonder if it's managed to pick that up. It's generating automatic subtitles for it. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. And you're saying words like Petrifny. Yeah, let's see how it's... Oh, yeah, Petrifny. Let's see how it spells <laughs> that one out. We're watching that back later. Strange. Strange. I think that was a good talk. I enjoyed it. I hope you did. Yeah, it was a kind of... Yeah, I did. I enjoyed it. It was a back to the beginning sort of logic a little bit. Um, we didn't mention deity connections, but we have, we have spoken about deities in the past. Yeah, we did. On a different video that you can go back and watch. <laughs> so, yeah, right, let's wrap this up. Okay. Um, we hope you've enjoyed it. Please feel free to share, like, follow the page. If you want to join me on Wednesday, I'll do my own vlog um, for men's mental health. I'll be talking about becoming a dad. So that should be interesting. 
um, and the mental health side of things and the expectations and stuff. So, yeah. Come and join me on that. What are we going to talk about next week? Oh, I don't no know. idea. I'd like to leave it till an hour before. Yeah, and see we'll what figure pops it out. Into my head. If you've got any ideas or if you want to send a, a question or topic, yeah. You want, let us know. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about anything. You must Other have than that, witnessed that. <laughs> we'll just come back next week. Yay, somebody's doing the love hearts already and we've not Ooh, even asked for it. Oh, that's Marion. Oh, thank you, Marion. No, it's thank lovely you, to receive the love. It is indeed. I'm sure we've had love from other people, but I don't know if I dare click on anything. <laughs> I don't want to break the system when no, it's going. Got, it's got those comments. Oh, there we go. There, look. So three reactions for... Yeah. So, yeah. But Anyway, thank you, lovely people. So, oh, excellent. One other thing. I've not had the full confirmation yet, but on Wednesday, I'm joining... Um, what's his name? Mickey with Dads, Lads and Kebabs. I know, I've just seen his name there and thought, yeah... So this Wednesday, I'm joining their podcast. Are you? Yeah, I'm like their guest. Sorry sorry about that, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be good. He's not told me yet what we're talking about. Okay. Because they, they do cover... Oh, no, I think... Oh, no, I'll best not say, oh, don't actually. Don't give anything away. No, we, we might. But his ones are recorded and then put up. So I'll give you okay. an update when that one goes out. Leah loves us as well, and Anna loves us as well. Love you all, guys. We're so easily led. You put hundreds of hearts up, but we only actually see one. <laughs> <laughs> but excellent. Thank you for joining us. Join us next week on the next exciting episode of The Wicked Warrior Sunday Share. Dun, dun, dun.